Hi, Phil Aston here from nowspinning.co.uk with another unboxing video. And as I like to do these, if I've got other versions and other variants of the album, to also use this as an opportunity to discuss those as well. And the album today is Sabotage by Black Sabbath. So that means I am going to be looking at the Super Deluxe Edition and also the 2009 remaster and the 1996 remaster and obviously the vinyl as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each one and just show you the booklets and then at the end I'm going to then tell you which one I feel offers the best replication of what Black Sabbath were trying to do back in 1975. So we're going to do that now and at the end as I said we'll go through and I'll say which one I recommend you get and I'll also talk about the album overall. So let's have a look at each one in turn. So this was the first one I bought. I was still a school kid in 1975. I was leaving school that year and it's the one on the NEMS record label from 1975. This is exactly the same inner sleeve that I had then. And as I say, I played this album this morning. So I shall reveal which one is the one I play the most or the one I think is the best version at the end of this video. The next one I bought was this one in 1996, which was on the Essential Castle label. The colors are a little bit faded on this, but it basically opens up with the lyrics, which didn't come with the vinyl album, or certainly not with the UK release. There's a picture there of the, the tapes and some live photos in the middle. And basically it says it, it was remastered by Ray Staff and uh, I think he did a good job. And then there's a small essay by Hugh Gilmore on the back. And that one served well until literally 2009 when this one came out, which is said remastered from the original source tape, 16 page booklet. So this one was a more, um, extravagant affair. The colours in the booklet match the vinyl a lot more clearer. It was different quality paper, which is cool. And this had an um, interview with, with Bill Ward. There was more memorabilia in this one, showing the Japanese one and also a copy of the, the NEMS one, which I own, and then a copy of the sorry, picture of the band. And then Symphony of the Universe, which was the B-side of Hard Road on purple vinyl in 78. I'm not quite sure where they showed that. And um, again, this was by Bill Ward with Jerry Ewing in conversation with him. And this was remastered by Andy Pierce. As I said, I shall just tell you which one I think is the one to buy in a few moments. And then we come to this, the new um, super deluxe edition. So inside is this is the piece of paper on the back cover telling you what's in it. And we have a booklet, which like the others has been well put together. And as you know, in my videos, I like to show you everything. So you can make up your own mind if it's something you want to have. It's mainly historical cuttings and old interviews basically glued together by the journalist uh, who's done a good job. And there's a lot of stuff in here that I was not familiar with. And it's very good. I, I can't I can't criticize this booklet at all. Um, as I say, I shall talk more about what I think at the end of the whole package, but this this is, this is very well put together. It's not rushed um, and thought has gone into it. It's odd that the lyrics aren't in it, considering the lyrics are in the other packages. And this is the Super Deluxe Edition, but I can't really say much. I, I love these old adverts, so as you know, I'm a sucker for that. They've got all the labels apart from the NEMS one, but which I suppose is a bit odd. Um, but 
<laughs> it's not really that odd, I guess. Um, but everything else is in there, and I do like this. And they've also basically covered everything that happened in 1975 and 76. So we've even got We Sold Our Souls to Rock and Roll, which obviously came out at the same time. Um, and I, I remember, actually, I went on holiday to Germany at the time, and I remember picking these particular versions up from the a German record shop there. Um, so NEMS were really going for it on Black Sabbath stuff. So that's very good. And um, it says that, again, it's been remastered by Andy Pearce. So the same guy that did it literally nine years ago, he's, he's tweaked it, and I'll touch on that again. What is a, a, a bit ominous is that the live CDs, there's no talk about where they were recorded, when it's obvious where they were recorded, and nobody is owned up to having anything to do with the remastering of them at all. Also in the box is a reproduction of the tour program from the time. And this again has been put together really well. I've never seen this before. And again, I, I love this. So yes, 10 out of 10 for including this in the box. Then we have a poster, which I'll cut away from now. And then we get to the meat and spuds, which are the CDs. Now, the CD boxes aren't gatefolds, and I feel that they could have really perhaps stretched to that. The, the discs themselves are a little bit too small for the cover, so they do kind of just fall out. But it's on the Warner's label. So that's the remaster. And then we get to the two live ones, which again, American tour, um, no indication of where, what dates were, no indication who produced it, who remastered it, where it's from. And I'll touch on that soon. Um, but also there's no indication about these tracks being available before. They're basically, I can tell you in advance of how I end this video, that the guitar solo and the drum solo are the only things really that haven't appeared on a CD already. And on this one, again, the guitar solo and the jam of Rock and Roll Doctor, everything else exists, but they don't make that very clear. And also, they don't make out where it's from. And then the final disc, which is a, I have to say, even here, is a cop-out because it's supposed to be a Japanese single, but I don't think Hole in the Sky was ever the B-side of anything. So that's looking at each version of Sabotage that I own. There are obviously others out there as well, um, but um, let's just look at those now and see what I think. Now, the 1996 one has probably the best bass response, I would say. I think that um, I played each one of these in turn, uh, and I would say that the bass on Hole in the Sky and Mulligamania seems to stand out more on this one than the others. This one, I would say, is my least favorite. Now, if I hadn't have done this exercise of playing them all, I would have just said this is the one to get, which is the 2009 one um, done by um, Andy Pierce. And it's the one that, you know, a lot of people like. Which brings me to this one, which you've seen inside the box, but I do have issues with this. And Ozzy, Sharon, if you're watching, BMG, Tony, Giza, I do think you're potentially not, you're not delivering what Black Sabbath fans deserve. That's what I'm going to say with this. Now, each one of these box sets that you've done, the Super Deluxe box sets, they're very expensive for what they are. They're not like the Jethro Tour ones, which come with far more material, bigger booklets, and they're literally a third of the price. I mean, I picked this up for £39 on the Rhino one from Amazon. I was lucky. But it's now about £90. These are over 100 And let's be honest, these have got like four discs in it, and this one, Disc four is a made-up single, Japanese single, which didn't actually exist. Hole in the Sky was never a B-side as far as I'm aware. And the two live discs, and really this is unforgivable, this, they are the bootleg. The bootleg here from Asbury Park, August 1975, 
they are basically this with the guitar solo and the drum solo added. The sound quality is exactly the same. And if you look online, you can see that they used lossy MP3s for those CDs. And I think it, I knew something was up when I looked at the credits and it didn't say where they were from, where they were recorded, if anyone had remastered them, if they'd been remixed, nothing. Not like Digby Smith who did the live stuff from volume four, completely anonymous. It's just literally coming hot on the heels of volume four, it was almost like a cash grab, and they just pushed out there as MP3 CDs, and it's a bootleg quality. And it really is misleading to say that this is a super deluxe edition, when really there's only one disc in here, and that is sabotage that we're really looking at as a as a as a disc and what do i think of the re remaster it's done by the same guy that did the 2009 one and the only difference i can feel is that bill ward's symbols are further up in the mix there's more treble at that end and there is a bit more bass at the bottom but really not that much i would say that comes in against the 1996 version so which one do I think you should own as a Black Sabbath fan of the album Sabotage? And I have to say, it isn't any of the CDs. It's the vinyl. This is my 1975 version on the NEMS record label. And none of those CDs come close. Now, you know that I am a big supporter of CDs. I've just done my top 10 reasons why CDs rock and why I, they are my favorite format. And if you think about the early UFO albums and what they sound like on CD, they sound like someone's taken a blanket off the speakers. They sound fantastic and Steve Wilson's stuff on Jethro Tull again, superb. But this, it made me realize that yes, the CDs have expanded the sound, but at the expense of Tony Omi's guitar almost being pushed into a narrow band. What I realized when I played the vinyl today was just how brutal and savage Iommi's riffage is on this album. They were, this was an angry part of their career. They were being ripped off by managers and labels and they wanted to prove a point. And this, next to probably Sabbath, Billy Sabbath, is their pinnacle of Black Sabbath for me, or the sophistication, the, the, the anger and the heavy metal sound of Iomi as he puts layer after layer of guitars on those on the riffs of Melagomania and it just gets bigger and bigger and the, and the absolute execution of this absolutely influential and unique rock band Black Sabbath and and this is why I'm I'm so passionate about this Black Sabbath are an important part of my life like Purple and Zeppelin that holy trinity and of rock music. I am from that generation. I'm a, I'm a Brummie, that's where I'm from. This is an important band. And I think for new Black Sabbath fans coming up now, it must be so confusing when there's so many versions of everything. And, and it really is a lost opportunity. You know, there's so much more that could be done. And it's almost as if we're losing sight of the template of what Black Sabbath was about. And I am a passionate advocate of the CD format and physical music. And the fact that here it is, the 1975 version that just blows out the water, the CD versions really. And I'd forgotten all about that because I just listened mainly to CDs a lot, but i would play this today and it's just no comparison. And it really made me realize that, you know, hole in the sky, that the, the riffs, the, as I've said, Leo and Leo Omi guitars there, you know, is, John Diggins custom SGs and don't start too late. That wonderful like Spanish guitar going across the speakers, Symptom of the Universe. What a riff. Gosh, did my <laughs> did my dad not like that riff? I was just thrumming through the, the ceiling when I was a kid. And Melagomania probably phew, in my top five Sabbath tracks of all time. It just the way it comes in with those riffs and the orchestra at the end and the bass head brilliant. Thrill of It All and uh, is great track, great riffs as well. Super Zart, could be from a horror film um, soundtrack with all those choirs. Am I going insane? I like that, you know. And The Writ. Uh, it's just perfection. And this is a lost opportunity. I'm really sorry. And it's not worth that money, kids. It isn't. Try and get 
a vinyl copy or in the 1996 or if you have to the 2009 one but that but this is this is the one to get and you and you don't have to spend 90 pounds to get hold of this either um the other thing i'd like to just add is that people take the, the mickey out of this cover saying it's one of the worst album covers of all time i don't agree the other thing in the 70s was that Bands were unique to themselves. There wasn't a uniform for, for heavy metal then or any prog or pop or anything really. Bands were individual. But what they did was they looked not like people you saw in the street. They was, this was their stage gear. Um, and to me, they just looked like eccentric, but unique and themselves. People look at Bill Ward now and he's, is it his wife's tights with his pants showing through on the back with his pot belly and um, geezer butler with a with an umbrella in his posh jacket i i just thought they looked mysterious and and as i say not like anybody else by the time we get to heavy metal in the late 70s leather and studs and bullet belts was appearing and by the time we get to the 80s everybody looked the same but nobody nobody looked like that apart from black sabbath and and i think even ozzy with his japanese way and again people people kind of you know pick that apart as well but i just think i just think he looked great i think the whole band looks cool so that is sabotage and i played each one of those albums i've played it four times and i've been playing it before i did this review because I wanted to really put across to see which one, and I expected it to be, this one would be the one that I liked the most because I've obviously spent money. And when I do these reviews, 99% of the time I've bought the product. I haven't been scented. I've actually put my own hand in my pocket with my own money and bought it. Um, so my, my reviews are completely, utterly honest, and that's how I feel. But I feel that for us Sabbath fans, this is not, this isn't fair. I'm sorry, BMG, but that this isn't on. Um, and you know, if Sabbath, if you're watching this, as I said, I'm a I'm a fan. I have been since I was a, a young kid in the early '70s, and I I just feel. And yes, you know, you've got me. And a lot of Sabbath fans will feel the same. You bring out Sabbath, Police Sabbath in a box like this, I'm going to buy it. But I, but again, I hope you're not going to put the California jam in bootlegging with that i hope there's some thought goes into it if you've even got any material for it but this is a brilliant sabbath album and as i've gone through this yes the book and the program are great but it's the price point for this the price point for this should be 30 pounds you know for for what you get it should be no more than 30 pounds make it limited but it shouldn't be more than 30 pounds so that's sabotage by black sabbath and thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. Please subscribe, share, tell more people about, about Now Spinning if you can. And thank you to all my patrons and subscribers. And thank you for supporting me, as I've said. And I shall see you on my next video. Mm -hmm.